Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com for your glider supplies. In this video about the LX family of computers, I want to take a look at how you can navigate towards and get final glide information for landable fields or airports. There are several ways we can do this. One of my preferred methods is the use of colorized labels. As you can see on the map here, we have Guelph Air Park, Reeds Field, Roseville, Rockton. All of these have green backgrounds. What that means is that at my current McCready ring setting, I can safely glide to those airports with my reserve factor in place. So how do we set that up? The first thing we want to do is go to our setup menu. And within setup, we want to take a look at graphics. And under graphics, we want to go to this waypoints and airports. And in here, and under label four, we can see that there's a colorized label option for various items that can be displayed on the map. Right now for waypoints, we're not colorizing the labels. If the waypoint is not an airport, then I don't need to know if I can glide to it and get there with my safety and my, and my McCready setting. So it's not colorized. But we can scroll through this list using our bottom right knob and mountaintops, if you're flying in mountainous terrain, might be a good idea to know if you can clear the top of the mountain. And so having that label colorized is a good thing. Or if the turn point's at the top of the mountain. This one got me in Nephi at one point. Some of the turn points are at tops of mountains and can be several thousand feet above you if you're in one of the valleys. So it could be important to have a mountaintop colorized. The next is grass airfields. Anything that's an airfield, we want colorized. Outlanding fields, we want those colorized, glider sites, and solid airfields. All of those should be colorized. One more on the list is a mountain pass. If you, again, if you're flying in mountains, it might be nice to know if you can glide through that pass to get back out to the valley. So by setting this colorized label option for any of your landable fields, it gives you a visual display on the map of everything ahead of you in which you can land. Of course, it's important that your waypoint files include all the appropriate information. For example, for anything that's a solid airfield, a glider site, an outlanding, or a grass airfield, that the airfield or landable field tag has been set within your waypoint file. If you're using CU and the CUP format, then you can take a look at some of my CU videos and I show you how you can edit these attributes for various points. But it's important for anything that's landable that within C you have it set as one of these types of airports. So one other thing that you can use is you can go to your setup and graphics and under glider and track, we can get a glider range area. And so we can select this on and we'll just look at the bottom here and it's gonna come on with this reddish color and we're gonna fill outside the glide range. So anything we can get to is going to be clearly visible and the background where we can't glide is going to be shaded. So that's an example of the glider range. And it tells us that we can reach anything that is inside this clear area with our current McCready and our reserve setting. Anything outside, we can't get there. Personally, I don't like to fly with this. I think it just obscures the map. And by using the colored labels, that gives me all the information I need as to how far I can get. 
I'm going to go back and turn this off under graphics, glider and track. We're going to turn off the glider range area. Close that. So now we're on task and we're getting low and we might need to find an airport. The easiest way to do this is instead of the airport menu, we go to the nearest airport menu. And this gives us a list of all the airports that are nearby. And so an important feature on this page is the ability to sort. Right now it's sorted by distance. So this heading is grayed out. And so the closest airports are given first and the furthest airports are at the bottom of the list. We can sort by any of distance, bearing, arrival altitude, required L over D, or name. And so we do that by coming down to this sort button. We press sort once, it now sorts by bearing. So we can look at all the airports that are in a certain direction instead of one that's potentially behind us on task. We can look at arrival altitude and see at which one we're going to arrive the highest or the lowest. You know, the furthest I can get would be if I plan to arrive at Guelph Air Park, it's going to get me there 76 feet above my reserve. So if that's in the direction of my task, that's going to get me the most points. We can also sort by required E, which basically should be pretty much the same as your arrival altitude, just taking into account the wind. I typically leave this sorted all the time by distance, and that way I can select what's nearest to me. So that's one way to do that. So let's say I wanted to go to this airport, Puss Lynch. All I have to do now is press Go To, and it automatically navigates me to Puss Lynch with this magenta line. It takes me to the airport map page, and we can see right now on my final glide symbol that I'm 1144 feet above glide to get to that airport. So that's one way to select airports, and that's typically the quickest and the one that I use the most. You can also select airports by using the soft key here for select. And in here, we have several methods that we can use to select airports. And so what we're going to do is we'll take a look at the methods. We can filter. And so using filter, what that's going to do is it's going to capture all of the airports that are within the same bracket. So in this case, all of the airports that start with P are shown in this list for P. We have Puss Lynch and Patterson and Purple Hill. If we want to go to ICAO, I never use that because I don't have ICAO codes put into any of mine, but you can search by ICAO code. You can go to list. And now you can see a list of all the local airports, and you can scroll through the list using the bottom right knob and select the airport that you want. Again, if I select Go To right now on Sargent Field, it's going to navigate me to that field. We can select by map. To select through this list, you have to just keep pressing the method button. So we're on list, I press the method button one more time, it goes to map. So now, I can select by map. And we can see up in the top here, it's going to select by distance from the nearest airport to the furthest airport. So right now we can see a little red circle flashing about Puss Lynch. It's the nearest airport and it's 6.6 .6 kilometers from me. I can select other airports by rotating the bottom right knob here. If I spin counterclockwise, that's going to give me increasing distance away. And so we can now see that we have Rockton as the next closest at another 6.6 .6 kilometers. Go back to Reeves Field, and it is a distance of 8.7 kilometers, basically. And now that we start getting a slightly larger numbers, we get out of meters and into kilometers. And so Roseville here, 16.2 kilometers. And we keep clicking counterclockwise on this knob, and it keeps giving us further and further airports. We go clockwise again, it takes us back to the closer airports. Typically, I use the filter method. And using the filter method, as I said, it allows us to select right now everything that starts with a P. If I go to the bottom right knob and I change that, I can get all the R's, S's, T's, et cetera, et cetera, and into the numbers, zeros, tens, twenties, thirties. So those are various methods we have available to us for selecting airports if we want to get to one to land out. 
Hopefully you've learned something new about your LX computer today. Please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com and like this Fox1 Corp YouTube channel.